Give us a little one-two. Who's Greg Rand? What does he do? And uh, what's Own America? Sure. I'm the CEO and founder of this little company called Own America that we started about nine years ago now. And the concept was that on the other end of the housing crisis, for most people listening there, remember not long ago, there was a, a big decline in home prices and the sky was falling and the housing market may never come back again. And I didn't buy into that. And a lot of people I knew weren't going to buy into it. And I knew there'd be a big investment boom on the other side of the housing crisis. And so I wanted to build a brand and a technology tool set and a, a national service capacity to help investors, big and small, to not capitalize on the housing crisis, but capitalize on the investment boom to follow. And um, and to use the kind of the occasion of the housing crisis to blueprint the housing market in a way that it never had been blueprinted before so that people would, A, never make the same kind of mistakes that we made last time around in the 2000s, but also um, take advantage of this spectacular asset class that allows everybody from major publicly traded REITs who own tens of thousands of homes all the way to individuals who just want to set their family up with financial stability, independence, and all those wonderful things. And somewhere deep inside, they believe that real estate is the vehicle to do that. Uh, and, you know, listen, people who do believe that, it's because they see volatility in the housing market. They see a company report their earnings on a stock and the earnings were good and they beat their goal on revenue and they beat their goal on profit and it's a great product and everybody loves it and uses it and yet the stock price goes down 20 percent because of some other reason having to do with the stampede mentality yeah. that kind of stuff doesn't happen in housing and so people have a especially when the world's going a little bit crazy which i don't feel like it is right now but when it does there's a movement towards things tangible and things that you can control and while real estate is harder than buying a stock, it's worth it. It's worth learning it. It's worth understanding it. Because once you internalize that knowledge and that know-how, uh, then you've got something that can serve you and your family well into generations in the future. That's why we call the company Own America. That's the, that's the way of life, the philosophy that we believe in, that you can own America. And so you should own America. And my favorite way of doing it is to accumulate rental homes because they're easy to understand. Most people have lived in one or grown up in one. They get it. It's just shelter for families. It's uncomplicated, but it's also on the other side, really creative and, and nuanced um, and has a lot of um, entrepreneurial ingenuity that you can bring to the table to figure out where to buy, what to buy, how to position your strategy. It's just really cool. And so I love coming on your show and talking about it and trying to turn some people on who may be real estate junkies naturally, but they lack uh, some momentum. And so we try to see if we can't kickstart your momentum here on uh, the power play. Love it. I, I like that word kickstart. Kickstart the momentum. It totally makes sense, especially yeah, especially when it comes to some of these uh, major headlines. You take a look at Amazon, for example. They introduced um, – they, they – talked a little bit about the two cities they're going to impact and to grow into crystal city virginia and then of course long island city new york uh, very interesting and you mentioned kind of as we were gearing up for the show that there are a lot of these big corporations that affect areas uh, that we should we should be paying attention to and how do you know what indicators to look out for outside of just Amazon's moving into a city. Obviously, that's a good thing, but I'm sure there are other indicators here. And then you mentioned something about last mile infrastructure. So help me understand these indicators for for big companies, what we should be looking out for, and then yeah. this infrastructure perspective. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really kind of cool. I've always looked to big corporations to get an idea of how to follow the money in. I used to always like Lowe's and Home Depot. And the reason was they built several hundred thousand square foot stores. They um, they knew when they did that, they had all this research, they had all these people doing demographic research, migration research, population trend research that I couldn't afford to do. Mm -hmm. But I knew when a, when a Home Depot goes in and then a Lowe's goes in down the block, I know that somebody lots of people spent a lot of time and energy making sure that there was going to be a lot of home improvements, a lot of home improvement money spent in that place, right? That's what that, that's what that says, right? Lowe's and, and, and Home Depot are all about 
basically fixing houses, fixing up houses, putting roofs on houses, et cetera, et cetera. So I always used to look to them, but Amazon has kind of supplanted Home Depot and Lowe's in my mind as one of the coolest places to look to um, because they're eating everything, right? Amazon is not just a company out there. Amazon is, is now at the point where uh, they're turning the country upside down and they're changing things drastically. So we've talked here about the idea of, you know, like here in Charlotte, they're building a massive distribution center, not their headquarters, but the distribution center that's going to employ two to 3,000 people. And I'm buying property in and around that area now that it's actually crossed over to the point of no return, meaning they're definitely coming. They've gotten the approvals. They've begun building the facility. And they've actually begun running ads for the jobs uh, for that facility. It's kind of a no-brainer. You know jobs are coming in. You know people like to have a short commute. And it just so happens that when you build a facility like that, that's almost a it's a warehouse, commerce, industrial facility, it's kind of near the airport. Um, usually the real estate in those areas is cheap. Usually the neighborhoods are not high-end neighborhoods. They're heavy rental neighborhoods. You can find those pockets where there's single-family homes. And again, that's my favorite asset class. And you can buy properties fairly inexpensively. And you can keep them as rentals and and collect rent and generate yield ongoing. The value of those properties is going to go up. Because real estate near a warehouse slash industrial complex is usually not the highest value real estate, but when all of a sudden Amazon becomes the warehouse facility in that complex, now you're going to see elevation because uh, of the sheer volume of dollars going into the facility and the number of people getting paid in jobs. Uh, Last mile infrastructure, I know we're going to a break, so I'm going to tease it a bit and we'll pick it up on the other end. Um, Last mile infrastructure is this concept that... Because of Amazon and others uh, that are putting huge amounts of investment in this concept of like you order something and it comes like in an hour, Mm -hmm. right? Same day. Same day and it's going to be two hours, then it's going to be an hour, then it's going to be 45 minutes, and then someday in the future it's going to be 20 minutes. Like you're not – like right now, you and I, we are our own last mile delivery, right? You pick the stuff up and you bring it home. You're the last mile. The last mile refers to that last mile before your front door. Mm. All right? And so what the world has been investing in over the last several years is figuring out how to get stuff to your house. And when we get back, we'll talk about how that pertains to real estate investment strategies in places all over the country. 